Welcome to uh, this Google Hangout. Uh, we've got three guests down here. This is about Creative Women Con 2015, our third annual event. We've had a great success the last couple of years. And, and uh, this year we've got a ton of new guests, including me. Uh, thank you for coming on. You guys will know me. This is here every year from Comic Book Store with me. A regular face down here at the Comic Book Store. But we're doing something special here, something that we have never done before. We are broadcasting live at the Google Hangouts, and we have a couple special guests who are uh, of particular importance to our membership. We talk for very many times. There you go. Gotcha. Um, and uh, unfortunately, there's no other than that. Nope, we no. are completely live. Completely baby. live. Yep. So, uh, welcome uh, both Sydney and Anne uh, as well. Hey guys. Thank you. Hi. 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 <laughs> uh, okay, I guess I'll go first. Uh, I'm Sydney. I'm one of the writers, animators, artists, what have you, for Transformers Elite, which is a, a fan project centered around using all of the different canon Transformers ladies over the years to make a, just a really awesome story. Uh, mainly a radio play, but has some animated episodes. Um, hi, I'm Ange. I'm one of the co-creators. Um, mostly artist, but also a voice actor for the character Flare Up. Um, and like Sydney says, we've just been working to really work and bring these characters to life. And as Ben has so lovingly introduced me, uh, I'm Edwina Sesso, but you guys all know me as Millie because it's a lot easier to pronounce. Uh, and I am actually a voice actor for Transformers Elite. Uh, I placed the fantastic search of the fire truck, Firestar. All right. Well, so before we go any farther, let's give them a little more information about uh, about Transformers of the Year, about how it uh, came to be. Uh, why don't we start with you, Sydney? What <laughs> is it that that got you guys interested in Transformers, in creating something like this, and continuing the story? When it comes to how each of us got into Transformers, I, I imagine we each have a, a different story, especially uh, Minnie. I know she's more recent to the fandom. Uh, for me personally, you know, it's something I grew up kind of tangentially aware of. You know, I saw Beast Wars and Armada growing up, but it wasn't something I was really into, actually, until uh, the Michael Bay movies. Uh, and that got me, ironically, it got me more interested into seeing everything and exploring it. And there is so much stuff. Oh, my God. But it's been fun because there's so many things that, you know, when you have as many years worth of content, you know, there's so many gems that get hidden away. And that's kind of where Transformers Elite came from in that, you know, really uh, fandom and fandom material what, what's awesome about that is that you fill in the gaps, you know, where something hasn't gone, where, you know, narratively it didn't necessarily need to go. And with us, it was that, you know, we had so many years of awesome ladies who got established, but as the different, you know, shows, movies, comics went on, they get established and then not followed up on very consistently. And so with us, it was, you know, well, we've got, there's, accidentally a really nice big cast put together already and wouldn't it be fun to see everyone you know followed up on in a, a cohesive uh, way and that's kind of what happened I mean that makes it sound very intellectual and it really wasn't <laughs> um, but uh, you know that's the academic sounding version of it <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, and uh, what got you into Transformers, and uh, how did you two even need to, to bring something like this? To <laughs> um, well, kind of like art. <laughs> kind of like Rose said. Um, I knew about Transformers, and when the movies came out, I was kind of like, eh. But it wasn't until like a year later that I don't know when I watched it, and I was like oh my god, giant robots, explosions, I love this. And so, um, like a good geek, I did some research, I went online, I kind of slowly pulled myself more and more into it and started watching 
more of things that I'd been kind of aware of, but like really then sat down and watched and really grew to love it. Um, and so, um, like Riz said, we met on DeviantArt. Um, we were both kind yeah. of <laughs> we were both kind of aware of each other, but just kind of like, oh, she draws this too, kind of way. So it wasn't until we actually met in um, a Transformers club where we, we were complete dorks. We met through characters, and um, we just kind of started throwing really bad art and comics and jokes at one another, and from there, like, our friendship kind of progressed. It was just one of, like, what if we did this, or what if we made this joke? And, like... We just kind of remained friends after that. Oh, sorry? Okay, so well, it's, from there, it, it came to where you guys are now. You became a friends. You decided to do something outside of it. And <laughs> I, I understand that you guys saw more in Transformers than was there. Because when you watch the original series, it's fun, but uh, it's pretty uh, pretty simple. Just, just am I using that? Yeah, it's Generation 1, from my understanding, it's fun and you watch it and you laugh and you're like, wow, this happened. This was a thing. <laughs> and this was completely something that they decided was a cool story plot line. And a lot of it, they do have some really cool plot lines. They mm -hmm. just never use them ever again. Okay, so they're there, they toss them aside, and they're done. So, <laughs> well then, uh, before we get to, before we go into the, the actual show, what was it that brought you, what made you take that next step? What made you say, we're going to do something more? Really, I mean, it's just, I think any fan, you know, nerds being what we are, you sit around and complain about what should be a lot, and <laughs> eventually, you know, we, we kind of found ourselves in a position where it was like, you know, the ratio of complaining to doing stuff is a little off. We should probably fix that. <laughs> Be a little more productive. <laughs> like we've we've always been the two who say like we need to put our money where our mouth is. We can complain and say oh you can do it right, or we can do it ourselves. Well, and also you know, uh, I'm sorry. What now? Oh no, I just said not many people take that step. So that was that was uh, I mean that sets you apart. Well, and you know you have so much more freedom being. Uh, you know, when you're a fan, you know, you can make something and you don't have to answer to anyone about it. You can just, you know, make it your baby. Whereas, you know, when you're with the studio, there are a lot of outside influences and a lot of things that you have to contend with, which aren't necessarily bad, but, you know, sometimes stuff doesn't work out for reasons that, you know, or just have nothing to do with anyone. It's just business being business. And then, but when you're a fan, you know, it's 100% for love, and so, you know, you get mm -hmm. to make something different, you know, coming from a different place. Yeah, it's, it's what, you know, what would I want to see, and can I show, to, uh, show and share with other people? Now, uh, as we told you guys uh, here in Sacramento, uh, unfortunately, Sydney and Ange will not be with us on Creative Women Minicon, uh, but Minnie is going to be down here. And uh, Minnie, what, how, what brought you, I mean, what got noticed for you on this? What brought you into the project? You know, honestly, I found the project because I'm on Tumblr like a lot of other nerds are, and I found the project just through general art designs, and they had character designs up before a lot of things even were put together. I saw a lot of character designs, and I followed the blog, and I was like, this is really cool. I'm going to follow this and see where it goes. And then for whatever reason, honestly, guys, they got lost on my Tumblr feed, and I never really followed it until my girlfriend actually huh. shot me a link one day, and she's like, hey, this project is looking for voice actors. I think you should totally try out for it. And I did, and surprisingly enough, I did not know, but Firestar's lines for the audition were actually lines, like the few lines that she actually says in the original G1 episode. Yeah. And so everyone else auditioning was going along the lines of how it was said in the episode, yeah. but me... I'd never seen the episode. I had no idea what it was about. So I kind of did my own edit. And apparently everyone thought, that's Firestar. That's amazing. Let's make this chick Firestar. Knowing that I knew nothing about that's Transformers. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, it, it, it benefited you here. It did. But since then, you have read some Transformers. And you, yes. I mean, Windblade. Uh, uh, I've definitely read Windblade. Loved Windblade. Which was fantastic. And we yeah. will have Ernest Scott here. Yes. The writer of Windblade for Creative Women in the Time. 
which is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, and so so from there, how many episodes have you done? Um, gosh. honestly, there's about. I just finished recording episode 19, so I want to say I've at least been in. You guys can totally help me out because I'm just blanking on it. I want to say at least <laughs> 12, 13 episodes, if you guys remember. Uh, I can't they actually the episodes. Time. Yeah, the episodes kind of switch back and forth. <laughs> a lot. Okay, there we go. There we go. A lot. Because the episodes end up switching back and forth between the uh, perspective of the Autobots and the perspective of the Decepticons. So some episodes I'm in, and then other episodes I'm not because it's a Decepticon episode. Okay. Then, um, real quick, we've talked a lot about the show and where it came from. Uh, give us a quick rundown on exactly what people can expect when they start doing this. Oh. The... I think the thing that would probably make it easier, if anyone's familiar with uh, Transformers, our starting point was that, you know, it, it, in the very, very beginning of G1, you find out, you know, you see a flashback to everyone flying off Cybertron, oh, the planet's dead, on the Ark, crashing on Earth, and then you get the little title card of, you know, four million years later. The story we're telling is those four million years that disappeared in the pilot episode. Uh, and so we're set on Cybertron with Alita One Squad, who are all female characters. Um, and so that's our premise. But we pick and choose different ladies, especially on the Decepticon side, from different continuities uh, in order to fill in and get us, a, you know, a sizable cast and a diverse, fun cast, too. So, you know, if you aren't familiar with G1, you still might recognize some of the characters since we did pick and choose a lot. Hey, well, hold on, I have one quick question. So, I'm only passingly familiar with uh, Transformers from my childhood and a few reads here and there. As far as I can remember, the only time we saw female robots was the re Rebels, the three, the three or four women. And mm -hmm. they were Autobots, right? From the TV show? So, were there Decepticon females up until you guys came along? There have been. That's the thing that's really interesting is that I think, you know, and this is true of a lot, a lot of characters. You know, when you've had 30 years of material from several different countries, there are many, many, many characters who've been established but just kind of haven't had staying power. So, there have been a ton of ladies... Um, on both sides. In the, you know, G1, there was a Leo 1 squad, which you're talking about, where you have, you know, a little group of rebels. But, you know, in in all the years since, they've tried new things. Um, the one, the two that have had the most staying power have been RC, of course, and then Black Arachnia, who I guess is also kind of arachnid in the sense evil spider lady. Um, <laughs> So those are the two that have had the, the most staying power, but there have been so many different people. Uh, I mean, I think the, the one that's been unexpectedly fun has been Thunderblast, who uh, was a boat in Transformers Energon, but we, we tweaked her a little bit so she could fly. Uh, it would have been a little hard to have a boat on a planet without water. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work too well. Imagination. Yes. So <laughs> you're using a lot of the female transformers from all the different iterations of transformers. Are you creating your own to go in there as well? As tempting as that would be, and I mean, it's it's very tempting. Uh, we're trying to stick with ladies who've actually been established, just because I think kind of that limitation breeds creativity, and also it's kind of fun to be able to to say. You know, with stuff you guys already have, look what you could make. You know, I, I know it's such a challenge for Ms. Scott and everyone else who's working on adding more women to Transformers. You know, there's so many things to work out when they're working with existing continuities. And I think that, you know, they're kind of getting that they've already got all these awesome people, um, but we're just dialing it up to 11. <laughs> Okay. That sounds like a lot of fun. So, yeah. Mini on Creative Women uh, MiniCon on October 3rd, what what kind of presence are you going to have? What are we going to expect to see from you? 
Uh, I'm definitely going to be updating the promo for sure, because mostly, for the most part, other than free comic book day, when I actually had flyers for uh, the show, we are actually 100% exclusive online with our promotion. And so I figured, guys, let's try and let's try and bring our little baby out into the real world and let people see it. You know, because not a lot of people are Tumblr savvy or YouTube savvy. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to get it out there. It's definitely going to be a uh, PR spot for sure. Uh, we might have a little bit of swag for people. I'm not sure. But I also am working on, this is a possibility, because of work is very much keeping me busy. But I'm actually working on maybe making something of Firestars to actually have at the table. Okay. Draw them in. Yeah. See oh, something yeah. like that. Um, so, yeah, you guys will be able to see all of this at the con. There's going to be a ton of different people down here, but you're definitely going to want to stop by Minnie's table, say hi, see what it's about, uh, and then, of course, where can they check it out online right now? Yeah, you guys can check out Transformers Elite at transformerselite.tumblr.com, and we're also on YouTube, so it's youtube.com slash transformerselite. And what about you? Where can they find you? Uh, you guys can also find me on Tumblr. I'm at eggsauce.tumblr.com. That's eggsauce.tumblr.com. All right, and uh, let's start with you, Ange. You're on my screen right now, so where can they find you? Um, you can find me at bugbite, B-U-G-B-I-I-T-E, uh, dot Tumblr dot com. I mostly just reblog random things, but occasionally I actually put art up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, Sydney, what about you? Where can they find you? I don't have an active personal blog right now. I'm all, you know, all of my Tumblr energy is going towards Transformers Elite right now. <laughs> well, then there they go. If you guys want to uh, see more of her hard work, uh, you go to Transformers Elite. Well, thank you both uh, for joining us here today. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. It gave us a, a little, another perspective on the entire thing. Yeah. Um, and make sure you guys uh, watch uh, to see how many does on uh, October 3rd. Yeah. Uh. No, it's, you're going to be good. It's going to well, be great. Oh, yeah, that's going to be great. I'm just trying, thinking about, I just recorded the latest episode for me. Ugh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, it, well, you just recorded it. Do we know when that's going to go up? Uh, we got behind due to some uh, difficult, ambitious animating. I'm working on tweaking the schedule right now. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so you uh, the, you can let us know until uh, Creative Woman Day if it's oh, yeah. up, and we can talk about it. Otherwise, uh, she she just gives you with it. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm a search and rescue bot at the end of the world, so that should give you a. You're, you're busy. I'm busy. You're yeah. very busy. Yeah. Uh, well, also, thank you for joining us. Sorry. No, no worries. Uh, thank you guys very much for uh, joining us, and uh, for everybody out there watching YouTube or uh, here at the Hangout, uh, make sure you check out Creative Women Minicon. It's October 3rd. We open at 11 a.m. You are not going to want to miss it uh, here in Sacramento at Empire's Comics Ball. Thank you very much. <laughs>